Um, well, I'm 18 years old. I am a preacher's daughter. I am involved with mixed martial arts. I am currently ranked number one at 135 pounds in the entire world. So I'm the number one ranked kickboxer. I'm a preacher's daughter. I've grown up in the church world a lot, so um, I've always been raised in a church. I've never grown away from a church family or anything like that. I think being as a preacher's kid, you're looked at at a higher standard. Like everybody holds you to a higher standard, and um, I've grown up in the public eye. Like it's never just the family business. It's always churches involved. Like so, our whole church knows our family business. So it's kind of different because everybody, everybody looks at me and judges me as I'm growing up because my dad's the pastor, so I'm expected to be the perfect kid. I'm definitely not the perfect kid. <laughs> fighting is my passion. I've found myself before putting fighting before God, and I realize I spend more time at the gym <clears throat> than I do like actually in church with like surrounding myself by my church family or reading my Bible or just, just talking to God and just praying. Um, I found myself before when I put like fighting ahead of that and then at that point in my life, that's when I realized like things aren't going right and everything's going wrong and I feel like it's me against the world and then I have to step back and realize it's because I'm not like, my priorities are all wrong. We asked Anna to share some of the problems that she faced while she was in high school, you know, being a Christian and being the daughter of a pastor. I'm not really the type of person that I'm different at church and I'm different around my friends or anything like that, but um, people definitely see me differently. Like um, a lot of my friends will act different when they're around me just because my dad is a pastor and mm -hmm. oh, when we're around Anna, we have to act a certain way because her dad's a pastor and stuff like that. Peer pressure is definitely a big thing. Like I've experienced it throughout my high school career. People want to pressure you to do stuff and you feel like you have to do it to fit in. But at the end of the day, if you go and you do that, like if you're truly a believer, you're gonna feel guilty and your conscience is gonna eat you alive. So like, it just comes to the point where you can be like, hey, yeah, we can still be friends, but I'm not gonna participate in that and I'm not gonna do that. Because if you do do it, you're not gonna feel great about yourself, so. Anna, just like many other kids, you know, they have this, they have this salvation experience while they're young and, you know, they go down to the altar and they, they say a prayer, but they don't really know what it means. So when she gets older, she tells us how that changed when she started to really understand what a relationship with Jesus Christ was all about. I guess the first time I was saved, I was uh, saved when I was like five years old and I was baptized. But I think like as a child, I was just, I was around it. So everybody else is doing this, so I need to do it. And it wasn't real for me. And then in November of 2014 is like when it actually hit me, well, I'm, I'm not living life the right way. And I actually, I guess, rededicated my life to Jesus. I was in the youth group and uh, our youth leader was talking and it just kind of, I guess most of the time when I'm in youth group, I would just kind of zone out because I've heard it before. Like I've been in church since I was born. So I've heard everything before and I always feel like it's the same sermon. And then one Wednesday, I actually, I just started listening and I realized like she's talking about me and this is me screwing up and like it's everything that I've been doing wrong. It just hit me at once and I just started bawling. And so then that night I asked to talk to her after youth group was over and I rededicated my life. Uh, it's, it's been tough. <laughs> like there's, there's always trials and um, difficulties you have to go through, but it's, it's good. The life of a martial arts fighter is never ever going to be easy. Uh, sometimes it'll be more than you can handle, especially if you're trying to handle it by yourself. Um, Anna fought and fought and she became the best at what she was doing. And she finally, ended up with the chance of a lifetime, the 2016 Olympics. So she moves to Florida to get herself ready to get into this fight, to be able to be qualified for the 2016 Olympics, and she ran into some more challenges. I had had a hip injury a couple years previous to this, um, but it kind of went away. It was just a little bit pain in my hip. It wasn't bad, but while I was at the, um, the training camp, actually training for Olympic trials, I was doing a lot of running to try to keep my weight down and this hip injury came back up. First it was just when I was running, I would feel the, like the pain in my hip and then it got to the point where when I would walk I would feel it and then when I was in the ring and I was trying to move around it would, it would be awful and I couldn't move. It got really, really bad about a week before the qualifiers 
So we decided that we we're still gonna go because this is what I trained my whole life for, or the last five years of my life for. So um, I go to the qualifiers and um, after the first fight, um, it was it was awful. During the first fight, um, I couldn't move like I wanted to in the ring. I would I just had to stand there and take punches a lot of the time. And I ended up winning a split decision in the um, qualifiers. But after that, it was it was over for me. I, I knew that I couldn't continue. It was heartbreaking because I'd spent the last five years of my life dedicating it. To boxing. I mean, my high school career was spent boxing. I'd miss tons of school for it. I'd miss Friday night football games. I'd miss hanging out with my friends and pep rallies and stuff like that because of boxing. So, but I knew that the 2016 Olympics is what was going to happen. I was going to go to the Olympics and then I was going to go pro. And I thought I had it all figured out. And I, I honestly, I felt like my world came down around me. Like me and my dad, we sat there and we cried. Like we cried for hours. And then I realized, well, it's over, like just sitting there realizing, well, my dreams are like dead in front of me. So at that point, I didn't really like, cause I know it's not right, you can't blame God because everything happens for a reason. And I knew it was part of his plan and it would like, it would lead me to better things and everything was gonna work out. But at that point, I didn't want to think that. Like I was just down on everybody. I was, I took it out of my dad, I took it out of my family. I was just, I was just mad. Through all of Anna's trials, she learned to turn to God and find strength in her faith in Him. Uh, there's a verse of scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, where it speaks about standing. It says that after you've done all that you can do to stand, just continue to stand. And there's, there's so many other verses where we have to look to God as being our strength, as Him being our keeper, as our provider. Regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what's happening in your life, you can always turn to Him because He will always be your strength. Well, I'd, I realized that the, there's four more years I can try out for the Olympics again, or I have the opportunity to go pro. Going pro is something that I've always wanted to do, so throughout this I've met like amazing people because I ended up switching gyms after Olympic trials, and I met like amazing people, and I just fell in love. Well, I've definitely uh, learned to trust God more and trust and put all my trust and hope in Him that because I know a lot of times we find ourselves wanting to do this on our own and we think that we can do everything on our own but that's not true. <laughs> We're much stronger with God so uh, I definitely I have great confidence in Him. <laughs>